Perfect. So we're just breaking down um, the mechanics of uh, having a, uh, an ambiguous Hambrius corpus instead of a specific one, really. Um, the claimant there um, needs to be last name first, first name last, all together. Um, and then the defendant is, what did we come up with in the end? Was, uh, I'm just looking at all that Babylon. <laughs> Whoever <laughs> unlawfully incarcerating them, I've got. Right, that so take a, what was what we're creating here is a non specific habeas corpus for everybody to carry around in their pocket, so it's totally without any kind of definition. It applies to whoever it is that is and has unlawfully incarcerated me in advance. So, this is like a, an injunction, and the more information you put on there, then obviously, uh, the more they can wriggle out of it. So, in details of the claim, why, why is this habeas corpus being laid? And the answer is, hello, 1861. Yep. Uh, why, why is the claim being laid? Because I'm being misidentified. What are you about? What's that sentence that we just went over about 10 times that you wrote down? Yep. Um, defendant, uh, I'm basically um, being unlawfully incarcerated. So why is that habeas corpus being laid? Due to the unlawful incarceration of the aforementioned M of N. Very simple. If I didn't need a habeas corpus, I wouldn't be filing an order. What a bloody ridiculous question. Right. But it is one of the stipulations of the criteria of that procedure so really what you're doing you're preempting them trying to get out of doing what it is that they're required to do and to prolong it by coming back and saying oh there's this or there's this so um and we only know that because of what we've seen of their exemplification of their due process there isn't any and so the less opportunity that you give them to find a reason why then not going to go ahead with it such as the next sentence then if you was to specify that it was at a particular police station or by a particular individual um in the defendants then you know, obviously you're not going to be able to use that premeditated document if the scenario doesn't fit the criteria of the details that you've written in there um Upon, when you see upon, it's upon consideration of the fact, in abbreviated commas, because there's no fact really about the administrative fictional system. And we're uh, speaking commerce now. You're exemplifying here the standing, you're exemplifying that there is no underwriters, they have no equity because the legal fictions that they're even attempting to use by uh, processing this document are secured. So you're, uh, and the only account that they've got there is this very nice national insurance account number. We have got lots of them, uh, so there's no point in doing anything with this one, um, Grand Corporation, um, because there's 20 million of them and all of the, national insurance accounts that are being paid out uh, universal credit, uh, you can't take the risk that we haven't got the assignment consent of it and they're all secured by us anyway. So that's the only account that they can use. They can only use that account once for the payment, uh, the discharging of the charges of the actual court fee. Um, and you're, the only time you're uh, really, it's like drawing the line in the sand here. Um, no contract. You're talking to the administrative system. There's no contract. At what point is the contract when you use that legal fiction? So that, however long that remains a fact, upon consideration of the facts and event, 1861 is no contract with Frank Corporation or any other agencies thereof. You're exemplifying that any 
claim is an attempt of, uh, is attempted theft because it's a false claim. It's void of valid contract. Upon the process of administrative systems being ignored, um, at this point here, they are. Why is that? Did you take? They took this out of the context of the other. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Uh, that, that came out of the uh, Cardiff. Right. Uh, so, in, in that situation, um, the process of the administrative system was being ignored already prior to that situation. Um, I don't think that that is relevant. It doesn't apply. Document. So I take that out. Upon MFN attempting to prevent a crime from being enacted, is it applicable? For yes, I think it is. Upon them, then that's that's very appropriate, obviously, for our scenario because the end then this sentence was used for was preventing a crime from being enacted by a policy enforcer and personal policeman and arrested him. Um, so the fact that you aren't using the legal fiction is you preventing a crime from being enacted. And that's you know what we talked about before we started recording. One of the questions that you need to put any question with is, are you now attempting to incriminate me or not incriminating myself? So if they put your fingerprints and they say, well, we've got your fingerprints, so we know it's you, then it's still not you until you say, that's me. If you say that that legal fiction is me instead of me being Emmy Minister and Ben, then you have created the joinder. And it doesn't matter if I've got your photograph, your bin number, your DNA, you have to be the one to claim that title. So Yes, leave that one in upon an event attempting to prevent a crime from being enacted because that is at all times uh, appropriate. Upon the complete ignorance of the law by the police attending the scene, yep, that's a given. Um, why is it a given? Because of the forced commercial intercourse, they're trying to get you to commit. Just by them being there and wearing a uniform, that is appropriate. Yeah, because I don't know the law. Yeah, the law were, of the constable was to, to know all parts of the law, otherwise it was a criminal offence to wear the uniform. Upon the complete ignorance of the law by police attending the scene, that is how you ended up being unlawfully incarcerated. Because we've got a bunch of criminals running around dressed up as police, we're all unlawfully incarcerated because they're all trying to force whether it was the legal fiction or whether it was some false claim made by a bank against your house, for example, or coming with the social services to steal your children for false claim because you abandoned them. At any time, any of those, that there is not a victim and there hasn't already been an execution of a deed, not the presumption that there may or may not be one now or in the future, which is what they are doing, is standing there assuming that we're, we're all guilty. And I thought about this today. I thought, how has it become possible? I was thinking about the Treaty of Nice and how, how did it become possible that we were all presumed guilty at that point and had to then imply to be responsible for proving otherwise. And it's not, we, it's not that it came to be because they wrote a piece of paper. We just are guilty. We, because we are presuming to be guilty all the time. We're presuming to be all right with incriminating ourselves. So we are guilty all the time. And this is 
this is why this reality looks like it does because we are we've incriminated ourselves all the time by assigning away our responsibility of what it is that we create which is why we have the appearance of a government which is actually a corporation so yes we are uh, all guilty until we do something about it so you're always upholding the law at that point when you sign a minister of event you're always upholding universal law and that is a very simple reason why the administrative system cannot be um, applicable to you at that point because you didn't break universal law that's it so don't add to any of the documents either add into the administration of, of the law um, here we've got again uh, Sean Sayer, his last name first, first name last, Chief Constable of Devon, his capitals. Um, this is the only reason why I'm saying this, it's in a box, it doesn't really matter, um, is so that we, you recognize it. When they show you a document of theirs and you, you can recognize it for what it is because you uh, have come to realize what their game is and how it's played when you send them a document back uh, it's got these kind of things exemplified on it uh, with all of taking into consideration all of the other uh, words upon that document the docking of your mentee is what you're actually doing there you're you're docking your mente into big blue instead of into Crown Corporation and uh, ecclesiastical Vatican Seas, Holy See. Um, upon a divine writ being issued by Ministry of Remedy for the arrest and detention of those breaking the law whilst impersonating it. Um, Are you going to arrest them if they arrest you? This is this is apparent. This is appropriate. If if you if at any time some some policy enforcer attempts to force commercial intercourse on you, you are under obligation under the law to arrest them. So uh, this is well, very, very right. Very well, to be honest with you, at this present now, present moment, I would say no because I don't feel confident uh, as to how far. How, how how much uh, what's the word I'm looking for again comprehension I don't you know I don't feel at this present moment that my comprehension I don't you know is enough at this present moment right okay oh, what is it so you tell me hang on a second you tell me what it is you think you need to know that you don't already know um well it's like I don't know because I know they're doing wrong it's just a case of like just, just, just coming out with a word and right and not sort of like not panicking sort of thing. That's you don't what it say really anything. Is. You don't. Oh, right, let's go. Through, you don't say anything. Uh, let's go through the scenario now. And it's good thought you're okay. on the record. So uh, oh. there's a banging on your door and you go and answer the door. Yep. Go, go and answer the door. Well, obviously I wouldn't answer the door because I'd talk through the window. Okay, so talking to me through the window. You open the window. I'd say straight away, I'd say, hello, um, Minister Amovan speaking. Right, I, I, I'm WPC from blah, blah, blah land, and I have got a false claim to lay against the legal fiction, and I believe that you are the liability holder in due process. If you don't open the door, I've got a warrant, and we can come in. I'm going to arrest you. Um... I would rebut that, obviously. Um, what would I say? Yeah, that's a that's a presumption and an assumption. Um, what would I say? Uh, that's the presumption, assumption. That is not me. Right. Well, I'm going to keep your doors in now. On the count of three, um, me and these police officers are coming through. Well, if you let well, you do that, you'll be committing. You'll be committing, tre you're, you're already trespassing. If you do that, you'll be committing, uh, what will you be committing? Um, damage. Uh, let me stop. You'll be, 
what you're, what you're doing is you it's so obvious here you're trying to define what they're doing okay you're yeah, looking for their legislation you're looking for the determination uh, their definition right okay yeah That's true yeah I get that joinder. sorry you're joindering your mind at their level oh uh, right yeah because you're trying to ident identify or you use the you're words recognizing or... them of having some validity of something that you understand whether you use that word or not. Right, okay. You are... Yeah, well, they're committing fraud. So, so, so no matter what, they're committing fraud. It's as simple as that. Okay, so let's, let's go over it again. I'm going to kick your doors in. Okay, all right, we'll kick it in then. <laughs> and, and what... Uh, first, okay, what are you going to do if I kick your doors in? I'm going to arrest you. <laughs> That's really great. That's all you need to say. So don't, when I, well, that was it. You just said to me, I don't know if I'm ready to say those things. And you just said it. Right. You are more than ready to say those things. And you're more than ready. What you did is you put me on notice now. Now, I'm uh, suddenly, I'm like, uh, oh, you're going to arrest me. I'm a policewoman. I'm going to arrest you. You can't arrest me. Yeah, okay. Well, I can do what I want, can I? Well, I can, can I? I, mean, I can, you can do what you want as long as you don't cause loss, harm, or damage to another. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, well, of course. I know, that, you know, they're the most important things. Yeah, but uh, if you arrest me, if you anymore. arrest me, are you not causing me harm, loss, or damage? So are you going to say I can do what I want? Because then no. I'm going to because I'll well okay you said no. I can do what I want and I'm going to say um, you well I, I that's unlawful and I'm going to arrest you for that. Well, it's not unlawful because you're but you do what you want. You're not. I'm not going to do what I want, but you know I'm going to arrest you because you're um you're, again I'm supposed I'm trying to define um what's the word impersonating a police okay. officer because I'm obliged to uphold the law. Oh, okay, that's a better time. Okay. Okay. Yep. That's it. Now, what you've done there is you've, you've stood her down on her oath without saying anything. Because she swore to uphold the law, didn't she? Yep. Now, what have you done? You've just leveled the playing field. Now, you are the party with the authority that comes under warrant from uh, pledging to uphold the law. Right. So you, you, you're the same as she is now. Right, okay. You've taken away her authority, you've taken away her jurisdiction. Right. So the, these really simple things. Yeah, because, right, okay, she's taking away her jurisdiction because she's not doing what she's supposed to be doing, yes. right? That's right. You put her on the back foot now, and made her the criminal. Now she is suddenly you've caused cognitive dissonance in this poor little mind that thought that she was upholding the law until now. So she thought she, she, thought she, she was coming for a criminal, that, you know, and suddenly you just made her one. Because she is a in what's the word? She is incapacitated a legal minor. In Incapacitated legal minor because she doesn't know what she's doing. Right? Well, she is incapacitated. Yeah. She's admitted. That, uh, are you trained in the legal system? Nah. Well, you're an incapacitated legal minor, then, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. What are you doing wearing that uniform, enforcing legal fiction on people? And you say you don't, and you're just doing your job, but you don't know what your job is, do you? If you're not legally trained and your job is to force legal acts and statutes on people, so you can't stand there and tell me you're doing your job when you don't know what your job is. Yeah. You just openly admitted you don't know what it is. So go home now before you end up inside Circo. Mm. Or kick me door down and I'm going to use reasonable force and I will arrest you and take you to the police station in your car and you will think that it's you and your buddies who are taking me there and then you'll find out however long it takes with this habeas corpus that I'll serve on you straight away. That's all. In fact, do you know what we could do? We could already serve them all in advance <laughs> for future reference. 
Yeah. Should this legal fiction ever appear to be uh, attempted to uh, have commercial intercourse committed on it by your administrative system, know this is waiting. Well, that would be a lot. That would make me. That would make me feel a lot better. <laughs> yeah, but you're filing them all. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> It's the actual exemplification of the deed that counts. Not I can file these documents and you know <laughs> all day long, and I have. But it's when it comes down to the execution of the deeds, that's what these training sessions are for. And then to go out and put yourself in that position to actually do it and live it and create it and be put that bullshit with <laughs> something that we have in our minds that I'm not ready for this yet. You're born ready for this. This, what were you born yeah. ready for? To create in from your belief. Mm. So, let's create some more. Uh, upon the credit file being secured, hmm? what you've done there, you've just reiterated what we said before about this. There's no underwriting. There's no bond to indemnify the matter. Oh, shit. I'm not going to make any money out of this. Get him out of there. This detention is lawful uh, upon all legal fictions being secured, including the company and all agencies thereof. This detention is unlawful. Yeah. It, I would put this detention is unlawful further up. That's your first sentence. So that's the why. Why is this being filed? This, this unlawful incarceration is unlawful. Oh, because unlawful incarceration is unlawful. <laughs> that's the that's the bottom line. Um, that's that's your what. So that needs to go in at the in the first line there. Upon the fact that the legal fiction in which the administrative system has the jurisdiction of being peacefully surrendered to the court, the presumption that someone is claiming something they have no right of use of is last name first, first name last again, is void. Yeah, but you, you haven't surrendered it at the court, did you? No. Okay, so take that out to the court, leave the rest of it. That's the fact that you have a minister of then is that, is that you, means that all legal, that the use of that legal fiction, or the claim of the right of use of that legal fiction has been peacefully surrendered. Don't, you don't need to say where, because you did it when you were signed your consent to, away from using that legal fiction. That's what people don't seem to get. Oh, she's telling me to give my summary to the consent to her trust. No, you are assigning your consent to yourself away from credit in that legal fiction. You need something else to pick up and use, and there's Minister of Event with all of its track record now. Um, of all that there is <laughs> for you to be able to use any way you like, anytime you want. So, upon the facts of all equitable rights that was credited, the title, last name, first, first name, last being assigned under universal law jurisdiction, uh, the incarceration of Minister and then 1861 was unlawful, did, did, yeah, take that out again. <laughs> That's your first sentence, look. The incarceration of Minister M. Venn, 1861, is unlawful and we therefore apply for this writ of habeas corpus. That's your first sentence. So, delete all of that that you just listened to, guys. <laughs> the first sentence is, the incarceration of Minister M. Venn, blah, 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 is unlawful and we therefore apply for this writ of habeas corpus. Take out, apply for this, and apply this writ of habeas corpus. It's us that are applying it. We are the secure party. We're not applying to them to apply it for us. So uh, we therefore apply this writ. Oh, okay, this writ. Emma Venn's unlawful detention requires an immediate investigation into the lawfulness of the matter by those responsible for execution of such unlawful writs and orders. Take that out because that's only relevant for had there been a writ or an order executed. Okay. Leave that. Leave that in, actually, reading it again. 
with his immediate release. That doesn't make sense, does it? With it, yeah, with his immediate release. Requiring his immediate release. The law of the is not by requiring his immediate release. Take the rest of that out. It's not initiated by universal or community trust. It's initiated by a body doll. So take that take out. Now, a universal rights already reserved and are not granted to commit commerce upon the equitable rights of this creditor. Not applicable on here because it, the appointer is in commerce and it is coming to smash you with your own cannons. Not you, the administrative system, blow themselves up with their own cannons by saying that a legal, a legal fiction, a real legal fiction, such as a company registered in company's house, doesn't have what well, you can't say it doesn't have the right to create litigation. You can't say that it hasn't got the right to lay a claim. You can't say that it hasn't got the right to commit commerce. You can't say that it has got limited liability, can you? You can't say that it inside the commercial cause, one of these legal fictions has got more uh, credit to it than another legal fiction because neither of them got any credit to it because it's really these legal fiction. So that's why it's a porito that's on there. Universe by it's already reserved, not granted to commit cause. Yeah, take that one out. Upon the rights of this creditor. Mm. Not best commit commerce upon the rights of this creditor. Which creditor? Creditor, which is the pointer. Are we talking about the creditor um, of the account, Minister 1861? I think we need to specify that. The universal rights have already reserved. So just put upon. Upon universal rights already being reserved and not being granted to commit commerce on the equitable rights of this creditor. M of N 1861. Because it's the, the credit is inside 1861. You, you are the credit, you are the treasure in the treasury account. So stop giving them your goodies and keep your asset private. Keep your ass private. <laughs> we're bigger and a big ass that is. <laughs> 1483, we nearly had it on video. We nearly, it's, it's shout the bath. <laughs> I'm off the bath. <laughs> uh, so we've got the then the claimant, the claimant's legal representative. Blah, blah. There we go. I believe that was, I believe, you see, it's all about belief. It doesn't say, I can prove that the facts stated in these particulars of claim are true. That's why we said, you know, we're more than happy just to stand to accept the burden of proof that COVID is unlawfully incarcerating the people of England and Wales, and we will take our passports and we will go to the ports and try to escape. And then we'll see how many people say, you can't come to me unless you've had a COVID test or an AstraZeneca injection. Oh, oh, why? And these are the questions. This is what I really want to get to. Somebody remind me in a minute about the questions that need to be come, let's have asked, let's say, um, at customs, you know, about, about COVID. Who is it that's laying the, the, who is it that's telling you that you are obliged to oblige me to perform when there's something that cannot be proven to exist? I've got this document here, and it says that by the order of Justice Stein, you cannot use COVID to lay claim with, making you in contempt of court. So I'm now obliged to arrest you, all this. So we're going to go through that bit. Uh, the rest of it is fine. Um, now help us please.
how do you find public bees number? And um, this bit I'm not going to record. Actually, because we're disclosing 